Good morning, Shiloh. Good morning. I am Margaret Itzeli, your clerk on duty today. Printed announcements are in your bulletin, but I will read a few announcements to you. The Education Committee meeting is next week, Sabbath, after church. The Education Department needs the students who are interested in getting tuition assistance to fill out three forms. The first one is Education Need Assessment Survey. The other one is Shiloh Seventh-day Adventist Scholarship Application. <laughs> and the third one is Tuition Assistant Request Form. The Family Life Department is having a talent show this evening at 7 o'clock. There is still time to sign up for the talent show. Please see Sister Samantha Archer, Andrew Garden, Lisa or Richard Sam to sign up for the show. We have a thank you note from Charlie and Marilyn McMullen and family. It reads, to our Shiloh church family, thank you so much for your prayers, words of encouragement, and the beautiful fruit basket that we received during our bereavement. Death is never an easy transition. Our family greatly appreciate all acts of kindness. Brother Rick Morris lost his mom and she was funeralized a couple weeks ago. Brother Watson continues to recuperate. He's, he's out of the hospital at this time. Brother Francis Poppy will be discharged from rehab on Monday, March 16. Sister Charmin Garvin will be having surgery on Monday, March 16. Please keep these people in your prayers. Okay, we have two readings. We have two first readings for transfer into Shiloh. The first one is Sister Chelsea Ross transferring into Shiloh from First Missouri Seventh-day Adventist Church. Amen. We also have Sister Roshan Botkin Greenlee transferring into Shiloh from Riverside Seventh day Adventist Church in Nashville, Tennessee. Amen. Okay, now to acknowledge this week's birthday coming celebrants, we have Marcus Michart, whose birthday is today on March 14. Amen. We have Naya Jackson, Jeremy Carter whose birthday is on Monday, March 16. We have Keegan Harris and myself, Marvia Ditzelli, whose birthday is on St. Patrick Day, March 17, that is on Tuesday. We have Rihanna Allen, her birthday is on Wednesday, March 18. And Chris Francis and Bradley Joseph birthday is on March 19, which is Thursday. Right. Emily Farrell's birthday is on March 20, which is Friday. Okay. Our closing thought is the Lord is near to all who calls on him, to all who call on him in truth. Psalms 145, verse 18. At this time, we will have the Shallows Comprehensive Health Ministry present a health nugget. Thank you, and have a blessed day.
what do you think people can do to avoid My name is Tim Byers. I'm a professor of preventive medicine at the Colorado School of Public Health and, and I'm a physician, but I do uh, work in cancer prevention and, and teaching about public health and cancer prevention. I'd say the most important thing people can do to avoid colorectal cancer is to find out if they have polyps. And if they do have polyps, have them removed. We know that colon cancer doesn't come from a normal colon. It arises from polyps, which grow over a period of a decade or more. And so the most important thing that is going on in the country right now that is causing or that is leading to this progress that we've seen and, and, and where we need to do better is to find and remove uh, polyps through screening in the colon. So that's number one by far. I'd say number two would be to uh, make sure people understand the importance of nutrition, both in health in general, but also for colon health and colon cancer. It looks to us like about 40% of all colon cancer is due to nutritional factors. What do I mean by that? I mean the combined effects of, of not enough exercise, being overweight, not eating enough vegetables in the diet, and eating too much red meat. So between exercise, obesity, vegetables, and red meat, those factors in our nutritional lifestyle account for about 40% of all colon cancer. And then finally, I'd say the third most important thing is to be aware of your family history. We talk about the average person, but not everybody's average. There are some families within which colon cancer risk is very much higher than the 6% lifetime average risk that most of us have. And those people who have more colon cancer than their first year relatives, especially if that happens before age 50, first year relatives, those people need to be sure to be screened and to be screened earlier in life. And so I'd say the three things that well, my order would be find and remove polyps, improve our nutritional habits, and be more aware of our cancer family history, especially colon cancer. First of all, we want to thank all of you for being here this wonderful Sabbath morning. And we want to thank the parents who are work with our adventurers and our pathfinders. We know it's a major sacrifice that you make every two weeks to make sure the first, the second and fourth Sunday every each month to make sure that they're uh, here. And so we're just so proud of our young people, amen? Um, they have really worked hard and they continue to work hard. And at this time, I am going to ask our drill instructor, uh, Brother Hodge, uh, to come forward. He has a couple presentations he would like to make. Yeah, I started Pathfindering when I was nine years old. I was too young to even join the Pathfinder Club, but my mother was a director, so I cheated. I went and I started, I took the first class, and um, too young to invest, and the, uh, the church wouldn't allow me to be invested or even wear a uniform. So my first uniform at nine years old, the Pat Finals, was black and white. And I marched in the first um, investiture service and stand proud and didn't receive um, my pin until I was 10 years old when I took my second class. And when I invested, I got two pins at once. Um, I, 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 at, at a young age, I, I, I took an a, a, a interest in, in marching. And um, I, I just loved how marching was, the, just the cadence and the steps and, and how precise it looked. And, um, and I, I, I kind of took it serious and, and, and at times I joked around and goofed around with it, but, but I continued to work with it and work with it and work with it. How did I know at nine years old that I would be joining the US military? I didn't know, but I took drilling serious. Um, I, I paid attention when, when it was time to drill. And when I graduated from high school and I did decide, you know what, I'm going to join the military, thanks to the Pathfinders and the drilling that I learned in Pathfinders, I was able to become a squad leader in basic training because I now was looked upon as one of those who knew how to drill and the drill sergeants gave me the responsibility of making sure everybody in my squad knew how to drill. And so thanks to Pathfindering, I was able to to, to take the skills that I learned from Pathfinders into the military. 
I got out of the military some years later, and who was to know that one day I'd be called to become a member of the U.S. Customs and Border Protection Honor Guard team. As the photo was taken two weeks ago, uh, two weekends ago, up on the screen now, and I'm proud to say that because I was a pathfinder, because I learned drilling and marching in pathfinders, I became where I am today. And at nine years old, I would have never guessed this is where I would have been. So my, my, my point and my, my, my message to you pathfinders and adventurers is, is you know, don't, don't let anything slip you by. Take it for what it's worth. Take the lesson that you taught and apply it at some way and somehow to yourself. It's going to pay off at some point. Okay? Amen. I would like, Director, I am proud to announce and present to you our Pathfinders Drill MVPs for the month of February. Each month, I review and I, um, and I, I take note of the Pathfinders when we are drilling and the two Pathfinders, male and female, that has the highest uh, marks for the entire month receives um, an award. Starting in the month of February, I would like to ask Pathfinder Janelle Ryan and Pathfinder Kadeem Francis to please come forward. Director, Pathfinder Janelle Ryan have met all the requirements in the month of February and have been named our Drill MVP female for the month of February. <laughs> Director, Pathfinder Kareem Francis has met all the requirements and has been named our male MVP driller for the month of February. <laughs> Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. All right. You're looking good down there today. Look at the colors. Wow. Nice. Um, good morning. My name is Leroy Rodney, and I am the Community Service Director here at Shiloh um, Seventh-day Adventist Church. So on behalf of our, um, of our Shiloh Community Service Department, we welcome, we welcome you to our church to celebrate community guest day today. Amen. You know, Shala SDA Church is a community-based church here in the city of Smyrna, Georgia. Community service reaches out to our brothers and sisters through the love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We serve those in need. We are the shelter in the time of storm. Amen. Community service feed the physical and spiritual food to nourish the body and the soul. You know, one hand washes the other. We are a committed, committed people. I will never forget from whence we came. We are a city that sits on a hill that will never be hidden. Let those who are able come and join us today as we celebrate those of us who serve. On the lips of those who serve are the words, I am my brothers. I am my sister's keeper. Here at Shallow, we have a mixture of programs to meet the needs of our community. From a vibrant food pantry service to health ministry services, from programs to support seniors, for our youth, and for our children, just to name a few. We celebrate all the other agencies and individuals who strive daily to make a positive difference in your community to brighten the corner where we are. Community service is alive and well. We are one. We are here to serve. So 
Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to, if you're part of the law enforcement uh, uh, community, we welcome you. If you're part of the fire department, we welcome you. If you're elected official, we welcome you. You know, members of the school system, we welcome you as well. If you're from around the block, we welcome you. If you're from across town, you are welcome. If you're from another city, we welcome you. If you're from another state or another country, we welcome you. If you're from another planet, we welcome you. We welcome you today. So as we celebrate the Community Service Guest Day, you know, let us all stand. And a lot of us are around. We are all servers, you know. And, and what is the greatest thing that we can do is to serve. So let us all stand. And in our special shallow way, let us stand and greet each other and welcome to our service today. May God bless you all. back to your seat. Good morning again, Shiloh. It is community guest day. <laughs> I know Pathfinder, we, we, you know, I almost felt like it was Pathfinder Day because of all the goodness that was going on. Wonderful. Don't they look good? Yeah. Okay. And just as a note, community, you know, when you see them in the community, if you're visiting, these are our Pathfinder Clubs. These are not the Boys and Girl Scouts. And we want you to give them every courtesy uh, that you can afford to give them. And they will be in your community giving out tracts. Uh, doing everything that uh, to keep up with our mission to teach and go out into the world and preach amen all right and win souls all right so today as it is our custom we honor one or a few people on our community guest day 
This is about what the community is doing. Oftentimes we collaborate, as in the case, um, um, the personal ministries department and health comprehensive, comprehensive health ministries department, the Bible Bowl, uh, all the other SWAT team, uh, all the other groups, they collaborate in order to go out and go into some of the nursing homes and the, the apartment complexes. Now, here's the thing. One person was able to seek us out. Isn't that amazing? Amen. And you know how she sought us out? She saw the logo and our van in the community, the church van. And because of her background now, she's not Seventh-day Adventist, but her family in Guatemala are associated with the Seventh-day Adventist church, the conference is there and everything, the sent the uh, whatever that conference is over there, <laughs> but they're, they're associated with that. And because of her knowledge of this, she was able to, to recognize our van and invited us to come into the Concord Chase Apartments over here in Smyrna um, to, the floor. yeah, the Concord Chase Apartments to minister to the residents there. Isn't that amazing? So here we are today uh, doing as much as we can. And I know Elder Clark is leading out that uh, department in going over there and collaborating with our honoree. And they're doing great things and more to come next week. Everybody will be going over to do a, a good uh, um, program over there. And so back to our honoree. That's, so just giving you a, a little synopsis of how we came to have this relationship. So a couple of months ago, we we're looking for the person that, as you can see in our bulletin, unsung hero. So for the first time, I relaxed and I said, you know what, let God lead and guide to find someone and let's not hurry the process. And two weeks ago, we got a call from Brother Clark saying, hey, how about this lady over by Concord Chase Apartments. Of course, I could always read bios and everything all day, but I wanted to meet with her. Now, if you ever go up to Concord Chase Apartments, you will know it is rough stuff over there. It's not your gated community that you just walk in and everything is wonderful and you park your car and you get out and you go about your business. You almost need a security guard, correct? To go there. Anyhow, I went over there by myself and I had to meet or honoree. So after meeting her, I tore up the bio because it's simple. Miss Jesenia Cienfuegos. She's an amazing woman, and if you look inside your bulletin, I did a little <laughs> uh, bio on her, so you can read that at your leisure. But just wanted to let you know the kind of woman that I met. I met a woman who made such a big difference in the community of the, at the Concord Chase Apartments and prior to that worked her heart out for the, the residents in the Buford, er, Buford Highway areas. And if you've been to Buford Highway, you know it's a dead trap just driving on Buford Highway. You know all those stoplights? She was responsible for getting grants, working with the community there to get grants because one of her residents, she was a property manager, one of the residents got killed simply by passing, crossing the, trying to cross the street. So she was influential, very influential in getting grants so that they could put stoplights in so those uh, pedestrians could cross the street safely. Amen? And not only that, she also cleaned up the neighborhoods there, which led her to put her own um, aspirations and goals of finishing college and everything um, in place or on hold to pursue another job as the property manager at the Concord Chase Apartments. That's self-sacrifice right there. Then it gets better. Not only did she do that, but she asked her husband and her, fa her daughter to pack up and move into the Concord Chase Apartments. I'm not gonna do that, and I know that you guys are not going to do that. And they packed up and they went in to this community and put themselves at risk to fight bullets and everything, literally, okay? Uh, there were death threats, 
that she received and through it all she was able to stop the violence which earned her a few accolades from the police department who uh, wrote her a letter saying that hey because of the poor management um, of the her predecessors that she was able to come in and clean up the the program and here's how she did it because this impressed me she went in the midst of a riot like literally went in the midst of a riot and said stop stop the fighting this is where you live this is where you're going to keep in order and she literally did that and she expressed to me that it wasn't her who was talking but it was god who was speaking through her that impressed me and one of the gentlemen that i i met and i'm not going to show you the video clip because it's really it wasn't that well put together. Um, but he was actually the one who I asked for directions to get to the leasing office, only to find out that she hired him because he was one of the gangbangers, if you will. And she hired him to help to clean up the property and became one of the maintenance workers. And he, at a later date, will show you the, the little clip, <laughs> my amateur video, of how gracious he was and how grateful he was for, um, for her as a person who helped to not only put jobs into the hands of the people who are just sitting there working, not working and um, bringing down the community, but also getting the residents together. I was there for about an hour while some other residents came in and they had different problems and the way I looked and I saw her dealt with all these issues just so kindly and you know respectful it, it really spoke to me that we truly got our unsung hero and God did a wonderful uh, came through for us once again and um, one last thing what really spoke to me again was that every Thanksgiving you know how we pack up and we go visit relatives and we eat a lot of turkey and vegetarian turkeys? Well, Miss Sinfuegos, she gets together with the residents and they collect turkeys and they cook them and they cook all these meals and they spread it out right at the leasing office and she and her family with all the residents or most of them get together and they eat their meal together. Now that did it for me. And I'm sure that will speak to you as well. She's kind of shy. And at this time, I'm going to have Yesenia Cienfuegos come up. And if someone will help her, come up. Because we have a few things for her. Come right up here. Come right up here. Amen. Amen. Let me have your husband come up here with you. Come on up here. She's a little nervous. You get. You you have permission to put your arms around her and hold her hand. You can do all of that stuff up here. Yes, sir. Yeah, come on. Get the family up here. That's right. We got sister. Come on up here. This is, a, this is a, a tremendous moment. <laughs> I'm trying to see how to negotiate my way through this name. That's a, I don't want to mess it up. Yesenia Cienfuegos. Yeah, Yesenia Cienfuegos. I got it. That's, I said it. I repeat well. I wanted to present this... Uh, this little token of your God-given commitment. It, it, there is something about when God has the opportunity to use a human being, how far reaching his love goes. I'm glad we learned about you, really am. Matter of fact, I'm going to vote you in my church right now. All in favor, aye. aye. Those opposed, same sign is carried. My Lord, 
I want to read this to you. For your unselfish commitment in improving the safety and environment at the Concord Chase Apartments and surrounding areas in Smyrna, your determined effort has truly made an impact on the lives of the residents and homeowners. It is evident that your love for God has, all, has allowed you to go above and beyond for his children in need. The Shiloh Seventh-day Adventist Church, Pastor Barber, want to present this to you in more than us, the God of heaven is smiling upon you on the, at this moment for the wonderful, wonderful things that you allowed him to do through you and your family. It takes a lot to move into, but I'm glad you believe in what you're doing. That sure proves that. May God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much to all of you guys. I really appreciate it uh, for this honor, for this recognition. Um, it hasn't been easy, that's all I can say, but I do believe God is behind all of this. Uh, when I first started working in Before Highway, I had to go through a lot of stuff. Um, but of course, it was a, it was a job, I needed to do it. And uh, I decided to take over and I started cleaning up. There was a lot of gang members, a lot of prostitution, a lot of drug dealers, and I decided to become their friends. And, uh, and uh, that's actually how I started. Uh, and the Hispanic community, yes, I am a well-known person. Um, when I came to Concord Chase, same thing, and Miss Francis is one of my residents, and she will tell you now, now it's peaceful to sleep in Concord Chase. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and they go to work now. <laughs> and I want to appreciate uh, also my assistant, Miss um, Karen Kana, because she has been with me all this time and supporting me with this too. Okay? Thank you. Oh, man. <sighs> what a wonderful day. Mm -hmm. I know there's going to be somebody in heaven. I don't know about you, but I plan on being in a place like this where somebody like this hangs out. I want to be there, too. Good morning, good afternoon, morning, still morning, afternoon, still morning. Good morning, glad to be here. You know, last, last week we were out of town and uh, I bring you greetings from CPC. Uh, I had to numb myself driving 10 hours. I'm old, you all. I'm telling you, I don't know how you do it. But uh, I said, well, sit back and be numb because you got a long way to go. Got to get back to Shiloh. I just love Shiloh. I felt good when I got on this side of the Mason-Dixie line. <laughs> I'm home. I left the north. I'm in the south now, but I'm glad to be home. Let me have all these pathfinders and adventurers stand. Look at this crowd. Look at this. Look at this. Come on. Thank you so much. What a beautiful sight. Thank you so much. While it's dying in other churches, it's alive in Shiloh. Amen, amen. You may be seated. Yeah, while it's dying in other places, 
what a ministry this church has to our young people. You know, um, when I first came, they said, well, we're putting $10,000 aside for them to go to Oscotch. And then it was, well, whatever it takes to get them there, we're going to do it. I like that kind of church. I like that. Whatever it takes to keep our young people close to Jesus, that's what this is about. Elder Hunter and his wife is here. I understand. Where are they? Guys, come on, stand up. Yes, sir. Good to see you. Good to see you. They sent that my way. And Rick, where's Rick? We prayed for you. Rick lost his mother. No, it's not easy. A lot of things to take care of there. But our love and our hearts are with you, Rick. And uh, sorry for your loss. At the, during prayer, I'd like to make sure we get Rick in this prayer. Board meeting will be next Monday, not this coming Monday, next Monday evening. Amen. I hear you say amen, board member. Uh, all right. Church call, church business meeting next Saturday night just for one important item. Just need to have you for one important item. Not this, but next Saturday night. Just for one important item we need to fix. If you look over to your right and my left, yeah, I think I got those directions right. I don't see any water spots up there. The roof is fixed. Amen. Elder Joseph. Or the company and Elder Cross and all those involved. That looks good. If you haven't looked at the roof line, I know you're not used to looking at roofs and see what they look like. But some of us look at those kind of things and it looks professionally, wonderfully done. Amen. So that water problem over there is solved. I didn't hear you say amen with that. All right. So we want to thank you so much for making sure we got that covered. Our website, those who have special prayer, uh, special prayer requests, if you go look on your bulletin and go to our website, we have an area there where you can send in prayers and we'll acknowledge those prayers and pray for you. It's on our website. Go to our website, www.sdashiloh.org. Matter of fact, if you want to give a donation to the church, there's online giving you can find there as well. How many have used online giving? How many have used it? A few people have used it already. All right, I'd like to encourage you, use it more. Now, you don't have to wait till you have to give your necessary offering. You may just come into an inheritance of a million dollars and you don't know what to do with it. Just go to that website and go to online giving and we'll take it. We can use it. But uh, go to our website. We're going to be putting some good things up there. Encourage your friends to go to our website also there. Poppy's getting out of the hospital on Monday. Amen. Long journey. Thank God. Anytime you can get free from medical personnel, uh, you're friends, but it's time to move on home. Uh, thank God for Poppy there. Still want to pray for... Derek and uh, Sister Gavin, Garvin for um, her surgery coming up and we'll keep you informed. Want to make sure we have everybody in prayer. Dinner will be served after church today so you'll feel free. Tonight Shiloh has talent um, and if you would like to be a part of that who's that to see our family life? Lisa or see Andrew Yes, you can see those two and get your name on the docket. And we'll see what kind of talent you have tonight. Amen. All right. Now, remember, if you display the wrong talent, we put you out. I just want you to know that. <laughs> this is not the gong show. This is a serious show. But if you don't have that, we we'll put you out. Thank you so much. Wonderful bulletins. You see the bulletins? Very nice. Very nice. Brother Elliot, just wave your hand. 
He hasn't been here in a while. Good to see Brother Elliot. And then my good friends in the back there. My Bible, our Bibles from the pantry, our Bible students, and uh, my good friend, I see him back there. He came up today. I see him. He comes sometime. Just wave your hand back there. Let everybody know you're here. Uh, there you are. Yeah, there he is. There he is. There you. I'm talking to you. Yeah, he is. Glad to see you all today. Good to see you. Our pantry is moving forward, folk. Uh, thank you. The Lord for his providence and his goodness to us. We can help as many people as possible. I want us to pray as, I, as I'm about ready to sit down. I told my wife I woke up with a burden on my soul this morning. Yesterday I was sitting in the barber chair watching the news. And my, I just, I was hurt with all the killing that's going on just useless foolishness. The hood is beginning to make me sick. And I know why we have to help people. Our folk don't know what they're playing with people. Taking lives unnecessarily because of car doors, hats, shoes, It's got to be, we got to do something to help our people understand what they're running after is total foolishness. Doesn't mean a hill of beans. 20 years in prison for doing something they're sorry for later. You help me. Because I get angry when I see that stuff. I just want to say to our young women and our young men, life in this world is not all. Don't you try to get everything here and lose your soul. Marry the right person. Stop trying to be like everybody else. Excuse me, but I just have to tell you. I don't care what people are doing and what they have. Don't you lose your mind. Your beauty is far more than your shape. And how you can do your hair. It's not how many women you have, brothers. I say this because I woke up with that burden on my heart this morning. Tell our young people, keep yourself close to Jesus. And if nobody talks to you, Jesus cares. We care. Keep yourself from that foolishness in the street. It ain't worth it. Hold on to your children. what you don't have but the Joneses have. Have Christ and keep him in your home.
to worship. And the thing about God, when he calls us to worship, sometimes he calls us by a different name. You see, in the scripture, sometimes God has to change your name. I remember Abraham. Abraham's name was Abram, and then he was turned to Abraham. His wife was Sarai, and then she was chained to Sarah. Their grandson, Jacob, his name was changed from Jacob. I love the story. I tell it to my son all the time. Jacob wrestled with God. And he held on tight to God. He held on so tight to God. You ever hold on tight to God before? That God have to say to you, let me go. God said to Jacob, let me go. And Jacob says, no. What did he say? I'm not going to let you go until you bless me, Lord. And God said, what is your name? Jacob replied, Jacob, he says, you're no longer a deceiver. You're no longer a liar. Your name shall be Israel. And God changed a man by the name of Saul into Paul. And we just want to thank God that he changes our name. Don't you want to thank him this morning for changing your name? And it doesn't matter where you're from, what language you speak. God is good and merciful. And if you speak Spanish and you're from a Spanish speaking country, just say Gloria a Dios. And if you're French, you can say Beni soit eternal. Merci Jesus. Beni Manuel. And if you're from the Gold Coast, if you're from the Gold Coast, like I feel I am from the Gold Coast. You can say, Onoame, Midawasi. Or if you're from South Africa or Zimbabwe and you speak a language called Zulu, you can say, Sinyobanga Inkosi. Or if you're from uh, uh, Zimbabwe and you speak Shona, uh, you can say, Tenda, Tendada, Ish. And if you're from Kenya, you can say, Asante Mongo. And if, you, you, if you're from Korea, you can say, Kamsa Hapnida. So we got to thank God. And I thank Him, God. I must say this. Hota ho Dios agape esteem. And you're all looking around to you and say, that is Greek to me. Your assumption is correct because that's New Testament Greek. And it literally means... For God, love is. Let's praise God. Who is this God? I've represented every continent except one. And the continent that I didn't represent this morning is a cold continent. Matter of fact, no human beings actually are born or live there. Scientists research there. And this place is called Antarctica. So if you go to Antarctica and you interview the inhabitants there, you will get albatross, which is a seagull, or you will have penguins. And if you ask the penguins to praise God, God said that if we do not praise him, the stones will cry out. So if you go down to Antarctica and ask the penguins to praise God and the albatross to praise God, the albatross will say, ook, 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 and the penguins will say, let us praise God today.
found in Exodus 28 to 11. And it goes. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor the stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord Father, you have been so gracious to us, all of us in this place. What would a world be without you in it at all? So today, it may be a few of us, but there's someone on planet Earth that appreciates your goodness. We've come today, oh God, to acknowledge that and to say thank you. In exchange, we ask that you will bring us close to you today. And oh God, we wish to please you. We wish to make you happy. And so come, tabernacle with us. Draw us close to you and to each other. Help us to get the right instructions. Then when we leave this place, we'll be walking in the right path. This is our prayer our request to you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. How great is our God. He can make every language on this earth rejoice. Even the penguins in Antarctica. How great thou art. Our hymn of praise, number 86 in your hymnals, found behind the pews. You can use a hymnal or if the song is posted on the screen. How great thou art.
great, how great thou art. How great thou art. How great. you got the last part um, so I have got to remind you of what it's all about before I remind you let us pray are all eyes closed all eyes closed I'm going to pray dear God there's an important message for these children to get this morning and the time is short. I am unable to put it in that time, but you can put it in me so it can be given to the children in the shortest possible time. Bless their little brains and touch my brain and my lips in Jesus' name. Amen. There's a big fight going on. Do you like to fight? Who likes to fight? Wow, that's not good. Come this side. Come this side. Come this side. A, a fight is not good. Somebody always gets hurt. And if you get in a fight thinking that you will win, you may just lose and get badly hurt. The biggest fight that is going on is taking place between two of the biggest people that ever existed. That fight is going on between Jesus and Satan. Satan is the next biggest one to Jesus. It's a big, 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 big fight. How big you think it is? Use your arms to show me how big. Wow, it's really, really big. Okay, thank you. Now listen, you are in the middle of the fight. Yes, and you're going to get some blows. Satan hates God. Hates God. How much do you think he hates God? Put your hand up high to show. It's really high. Higher than you can reach. He wants to kill God. And so he's doing everything to get rid of God. He wants you dead. Is it true that Satan was one of the high one of the high angels? He was the highest angel. He, angel. he was next to Jesus. He was next to God in power. So he has a lot of power. Don't you ever think that you can fight him? You just can't. He's very, 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 very powerful. So listen now. 
listen now. You've got to come to me lunchtime and I'll tell you, you listen now. Um, he wants everybody. You, all the boys and girls, all the mommies and daddies, every man, every woman, to die and to remain dead forever and ever and ever. God doesn't want that. God loves us. He loves us so much that he said, I want to die for all those boys and girls, all those mommies and daddies, all the men, all the women, all the little babies, that if they will love and obey me, I let them live forever and ever and ever happily. Would you like that? Well, the only thing that could make that possible is that God had to die for us. And so he sent someone to die for us. You talk to me at lunchtime, okay? Remember, I'll be here. He sent, who did he send to die for us? God. Jesus. He sent Jesus. Now, just before Jesus died, Jesus told his friends, look out. Satan is going to try to hurt you because he, he hates you just as much as he hates God. And because he can't come to live with God, he's going to try to hurt you very badly. But if you love and obey God, God will help you. The first thing that will happen, Jesus told them, is Jerusalem is going to be destroyed. If you stay in Jerusalem, you are going to be destroyed with Jerusalem. So when you see the city, what? Who remembers? When you see the city? Um, the, um, the soldiers walk around. Good. When you see the city surrounded, escape to the mountains. They obeyed Jesus and they escaped to the mountains and they were safe. And then they began to tell other people, do you know God is love? God loves you and he wants you to be saved. He wants you to live with him forever. And he sent Jesus to die for you. And he told them, all, they told the people all the stories. And many, many persons got to love God and Jesus. And the number grew big, big, big. Now, the Romans didn't know, didn't love God. They, can you imagine people praying to things cut out of stones and sticks? Can you imagine that? Would you pray to an idol? They had idols and they loved their ruler and they would obey and worship their ruler, but not God, not Jesus. Now, when the Roman leader saw that so many persons were loving Jesus and following those other the Christians, he said, no, 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 we've got to get rid of them. So the soldiers were told to, to do what? To kill, to kill them. To kill them. Oh, you catch them and kill them. Please, everyone. Because of that, the people had to run and hide. They made a special thing digging out some places tunnels underground to live what were those tunnels called the catacombs oh very good oh you're, you're the catacombs and they lived in there was life in the catacombs nice and good and comfortable and sweet no it was terrible terrible but the Christians who loved and obeyed God said, we prefer to live in terrible conditions and obey God. There were some Christians who said, mm, I can't manage the hard life. Do you like hard life? Not, no, no, a lot of people don't like hard life. Would you prefer to live a hard life just to love and obey God? Yeah, yeah. yeah well, some of those Christians said, no, 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 not for me. I kind of love God, you know, but I love to have a nice, comfortable life. So guess what? I think I won't go in the catacombs at all. Yeah, you know what? What if we could just do like some of those Romans or they worship? Huh? You think we could take some of their idols and put in our churches? <clears throat> and maybe we could, um, you know, just talk the way they talk and live the way they live. I do like the Romans and maybe they won't hurt us and so some of the Christians 
did not do the right things. They lived like the Romans, worshipped like the Romans. They went to church, but they did some of the pagan things. That's a word to learn. What's the word? Pagan. And they didn't love God. And then life was easy for them. They were not persecuted. But the ones who loved God, what happened to them? What happened they to the ones who loved God? They stayed in the cocoon. They stayed in the catacombs and they were safe. God kept them safe in the catacombs. Satan kept the others who didn't love God safe outside. Do you think that was right? Anytime people serve God the right way, they are persecuted. I am going to just close with the last little thing from this. Michael and his mommy was talking about that big great controversy and Michael said mommy but why aren't people persecuted now mommy said I don't know some people are persecuted in some countries but maybe just maybe there are some persons who say we are kind of living like how the people who don't love God live let's be careful children so that you live the right way will you okay I want just one person to pray who's going to come Ah, all right guess what i'm going to take somebody who ha haven't seen for a long time you come i haven't seen him for a long time so i'm going to take him thank you Dad, for this day everybody eyes closed eyes closed close thank your you. eyes Thank you, God, for bringing us to here to church so we can do what's right and listen to what the law is so we can um, um, not kill ourselves so we won't um, behave rude. So, God, please help us so we can, we can live with you. Amen.
let us be reminded that a time will soon come when many of us will be glad to give away what we have. A time will come when the things we have won't mean anything to us. And it's important to remember why we give. Will a man rob God? Yet he hath robbed me. But he say, Wherein have ye robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, that ye shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast your fruit before the time in the field, said the Lord of hosts. Let us pray. O oh, Father and our God, as we, your children, live and dwell in these last days, let us recognize these opportunities to give ourselves of our time and our talents. Let us recognize what our purpose truly are. To be the last heralds of taking in your message to all the corners of the earth. Let the tithes that have been presented here today be a blessing for that purpose. Bless the people who gave and those who could not. And Father God, let all of this that has been handed to you be the tip of the spear, even the ramrod against all of the bastions that would stand as an obstacle for the spreading of your gospel in these last days for Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. Oh Lord, we return what is thine and we offer the gifts of our praise and our words. We say thank you for the blood that you shed. We say thank you for your spirit so near. We say thank you just for bringing us here. said unto me let us go into the house of the Lord 
This has been a trying week for me and my family. But I'm glad that I can come to the house and give God thanks and give him praise in spite of what we has been through. Amen. Every one of us in here must and have a reason to give God praise and thanks for simply because of waking us up this morning and bringing us here safely. I do not know what your guys are going through but if you do have a burden on your heart or you do have something that you want God to do for you or you do have a sickness or a need of a healing I would advise you to come up but if you're coming up please believe that God will answer your prayers Amen. in coming up because faith without works is dead so please believe that God will reward you in prayer. If you don't feel like coming up, you can sit in your seat. Because God can touch you anywhere. At the altar or in the pews. Heavenly Father, Lord, we give you praise, we give you thanks, we give you honor. Lord, we give you glory, Lord, we worship your name, Lord, we shout back your name, Lord, we hallow your name this morning, O oh God. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for your people, O oh God, are in need, O oh God. Lord, we come humble before you this morning, O oh God, not worthy to be in your presence, O oh God. Lord God, we have as filthy rags, O oh God, and we're asking you, O oh God, that you cleanse us from all unrighteousness, dear Father. Wash us, O oh God, in your blood, dear Father. As your songwriter says, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus, O oh God. So, Lord God, we thank you right now, O oh God, for your healing power, dear Father. O oh God, have your own divine way this morning, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for the sick and the shut in, O oh God. I pray, O oh God, that you will guide them, O oh God. You will protect them, their Father, in the name of Jesus, O oh God. Lay beside their bed, their Father. O oh God, bring healing to them, O oh God. Those who are in need of a job, O oh God, provide for them, O oh God. A place to stay, O oh God. Food to eat, O oh God. Clothes, O oh God, to wear. Provide for them, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, O oh God. We fail not to give it an honor. We fail not to give it a glory, O oh God. We thank you for spared life. We thank you, O oh God, for the young children, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for Brother Rick, O oh God. I pray you at this point in time where he's lost, O oh God, his mom. We pray, O oh God, that you'll bring comfort to him and his family, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, O oh God. We pray, O oh God, right now for those who couldn't make it to church, O oh God, for whatever reason, O oh God. We pray, O oh God, that you will just touch them wherever they are at this point in time. Those who are viewing, O oh God, online. Have your own divine way, oh God. And we say thank you right now, oh God, that you will answer our prayers right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. Provide for us, oh God, your children, oh God. For every day that we need you now is now, oh God, and more than ever, oh God. We pray that we will continue to hold on to you. In Jesus' holy, precious name we pray. Amen and amen. church 
The scripture in the bulletin was printed correctly, but the Holy Spirit had another scripture for us to read for our reading this morning. Um, our reading will be taken from Hebrews 12th chapter, verses 25 through 29. Our new reading will be taken from Hebrews 12, verses 25 through 29. And once you have it, have it, if you're able to stand, let's stand for the reading of the word of God, please. I will read in your hearing. See that you do not refuse him who speaks. If they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised saying, yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken, as of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve, God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. I pray that the Holy Spirit will open up our intellect so that we will receive the spiritual food that he has for us today. Amen. Thank you. 
Testing, 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 testing. Thank you. Testing. Testing. Is this on? I want to thank my brother every time he brings that. <laughs> I can imagine what the five piper. Testing, testing. Is it working? That's working. Okay, we get it. Want to thank you, my brother. Every time you come, you bring. <laughs> That's all right. We got to take this to the street one of these days. We got to let the brothers hear this so they can know what Jesus is about. That's what I believe. I asked everyone else to leave the roster except Rose. This is her place up here. So she can do this. Let's pray. Father, speak to our hearts in these few moments. Say something to us. Oh, God, say something to us, please. You're, speak, your servants here. In Jesus' name, amen. There were two men that desired to build their dream house. You know how it is about building a dream house? It's a house you can't afford, but you really dream it anyhow. You know about those houses. Well, these two men, had, uh, I guess they had gotten the money. They found a nice coastal place on the beach to build their house. The first man, the first man decided that he couldn't wait long to build his house. He had the money, so let's get this done. You know how it is. Hardly no planning went into all of the conditions. He just knew it was on the beach. You know how it is on the beach? It's cool. He wanted to be as close to the water as possible. He never took into account that hurricanes frequently come there. The only thing he knew is he had the money, so let's get it done. So he went out and they started digging in the sand and they dug down just a, you know, a little deep, but most of all, it was the above ground that he was concerned about. He put all these windows in it so that he could look out at the ocean from any angle he desired, from the bedroom, from the kitchen, from here. Can you see these big bay windows? And all he could see is that water splashing. That was his dream house. It was tough. It was made of stucco. It was good. He put all the modern conveniences you could ever want. It was just like living on the beach. He tried to get as close to living on the beach as possible. His concern was not the foundation. His concern was the external. You follow me, please. He didn't care about what was warned, what he was warned about as far as hurricanes were concerned. His concern was that people would drive by and admire this fantastic house he built. It wasn't underground, it was above ground that he was concerned about. He didn't care about the future, is what he had now. Matter of fact, he reasoned to himself, ah, the future, ha, huh? you never know if you're going to be living then. So enjoy it all now. Get it all now. You following me? Hmm. One day, to his detriment, there was warning. Vacate your property a major five hurricane is on the way. <laughs> he hadn't planned for this. What's a major five hurricane? Don't know. He doesn't care. He, you know, he reasoned to himself that he could look out his window and know when to break for it when it came. He just didn't think that something like this could ever destroy such a nice looking house. After all, it was his dream house. And so it happened. The wind blew and it came. The hurricane blew winds at about 200 miles an hour. Hmm. 
You know what was left? You, you're right, nothing. His house didn't have any foundation. It was nothing for the wind. It was pretty above the ground, but it had no depth of earth. It was just pretty. That's all. It had nothing to keep it. It was just pretty. The other man wanted to take a while for his house. He had the same aspirations. But he thought about the future. What is it going to take for this to be stable all my life? He didn't think about how quickly he could get the house up. Follow me, please. But he thought about how long it would stay if he built it. Same place, but different plan. He decided that he would bring piles in. And that the clay was not strong enough for him to build a house on. So he had concrete poured several miles down in the ground. It was going to take him an awful long time to build his dream house. But that wasn't his concern. His concern is that his house would last as long as he wanted it to. So he invested extra money for the foundation. They poured the concrete. They laid the bricks. They poured more concrete. They laid the bricks. By that time, summer had passed. It was getting a little colder outside. People were beginning to laugh. Man, that's taken a long time for that man to build that house. I wonder what that's going to be like. <laughs> and finally, his dream house was finished. He didn't put in all those windows that the first man did. He just put in a few, just for view. Because this man thought about how long he wanted his house to stay and not how pretty it was. You know the story. The wise man built his house upon the... But the foolish man... <laughs> you got to listen to this. But the foolish man built a pretty house on the sand. Pretty house. Not a stable house, but a pretty house. I want to talk to us about something that comes to my mind. What is your Christianity, its foundation being planted on? If your faith is predicated only upon God giving you something, what happens if he doesn't give you any more? I don't want us to be deceived because listen to the word of God. Hebrew says that if God shook the earth when he was here, in these last days, the Lord is going to allow not only the earth to be shaken, but the heavens also to be shaken. And then he says, God is a consuming fire. Listen to this, people. You see, ladies and gentlemen, it's easy to proclaim God when nothing is going bad. But there's coming a time before Jesus comes, he's got to make what we say about God honest. Uh, you got to hear me. The Lord is going to allow some things to happen to this earth that is also going to be shaking the heavens as well. In Hebrew thinking, it is global, it is worldwide, and it is catastrophic. Here's what I'm greatly concerned about. You're talking about ISIS and what they're doing over there. You just wait till God finally says, I got to finish this now. And you have not seen nothing yet. So the question is, what 
is my faith founded on? Now, let me share something. Go with me. Exodus chapter 16. Come with me quickly. I know it's late. Exodus chapter 16. I want to, dis- I want to look at this. Cold feet. <laughs> Exodus chapter 16. I want you to see this with me. My Christianity is based on what? Beginning with verse 1. Lay the foundation. The Israelites, before we read this, had come out of Egypt and they only been out a few months. Watch this. Before then, remember when they didn't have any water, when they were walking through the desert, and they finally found some, but the water was bitter. The people complained to Moses, but didn't pray to God. Ah, listen to me. They complained to a man and didn't talk to God. And so the Lord said, then the Lord told Moses what to do. He says, now go and take a stick, (laughs) some wood, and throw it in the water. And the water became sweet to drink. Come on, say amen with me. Listen, 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 listen. The only reason why the water became sweet is because God was brought into the product. Ah! Follow me. Listen, saints. The only reason why the water became sweet is because God was brought into the process. Listen. When they came out of Egypt, don't you think God knew what they needed before he got them out? No, you miss what I'm saying. Listen to me, saints. Don't you think when the Lord asked you to join this church, he already knew how to take you through? Before you got the education, God already knew how to get you through. Listen. He says, he says, these complaining people had already seen. Didn't God open the sea and already prove to them that he could take care of them? Come on, talk to me. Listen, folks. The only reason why you and I are here today is because of the Lord. When they brought us over here on that boat, we shouldn't be here. So many people died, but you made it. The South was a bad place to live. As bad as it was, you are here today. They came out because they couldn't have their immediate needs met, they complained. Let me say one thing about faith and temptation, temptation and testing. There are two thrones after us, two thrones. As the children's story was told, God wants us and so does the devil. Two thrones. Their method of getting us is two different ways. God is trust testing us to strengthen our faith and the devil is tempting us to take it away from us. Mm. Got to hear me. You see, testing and tempting are two different things. One is to help us hold on, and the other one is to take what we have. Two, they're after us. So here's what God is trying to do. As he tries to test us, and get this about faith, you never get comfortable with faith. You know why? Because you don't control it. Have you ever noticed that? When the Israelites left Egypt, they didn't know where they were going. 
That was God's prerogative. And when they needed to eat, notice what the Lord said. They took their flock out of Egypt with them and the Jews. Where were they going to spend it? In the desert. They didn't have any trade stores there. And why would God take them through most, the most difficult part? Through a desert. There was no promise of water nor food. You know what they had the promise of? Him. His promise is, I will be with you forever. Come on, say amen with me. I don't know if you understand what that means. I'd rather have God on my side, ladies and gentlemen. Poor Joe Turkey, as long as God is with me. You don't understand it, but you will one day if you don't. God with me. God with me. He's the only one that really legitimately looks out for you. He got your back. God with me. So as they came out, <laughs> and the Lord brought them out, Moses, as their leader, could only do what God says. And so now they're out. Verse 1. And they journeyed through Elam, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came to the what? Wilderness of sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, and the, on the 15th day of the hot month. Two months out of Egypt. <laughs> two months. After they departed from the land of Egypt. Verse 2 says. Then the what? Whole congregation of the children of Israel did what? Complained against Moses and Aaron. In the wilderness. That's why I say. You know something? We're so fickle. You hollered in slavery. And then you hollered when you got out. Oh, I learned something from this. The Lord has to have mercy. You know why? Look what he's dealing with. Look at yourself. That's what he's dealing with. <laughs> and we are a piece of work. Here's why the Lord doesn't just instantaneously always give us something. We get spoiled. We think it's supposed to be like this. God has been so gracious and good to us, we don't understand how profound it has been. When somebody thought about firing you and it was in their conversation, they get there and change their mind. Do you know that's the act of God? I already told you I was in Chicago. We were preparing to go out and do some book selling. I woke up that morning and not too far from us was a man standing on the corner who had a bad night with a pistol in his pocket. He had already committed killing somebody before he got to the corner. He said in his mind, the first person that comes past here, I'm going to blow their brains out. It was already by the devil planted in his mind. You know what happened? Somebody else must have had worship that morning and got the Holy Ghost in them and was kind. And when he got up to the man, he spoke to him and said, how you doing, sir? Hope you have a nice day and pass by. He shot the second person that came. I'm not telling you something I read. I know I was there. The second person who wasn't as kind. You don't know from one day to the next what is ever going to occur. We have no earthly idea. Just talking to Morris this morning. He just told me the other day the man that got killed, he saw the body on the ground when he got there. Not too far from where he was. Every day 
we have no earthly idea what we're going to be facing. We routinely go to bed, get up, have our breakfast, brush our teeth, comb our hair, put clothes on, and go to work. Ha! Do you know it took a miracle to have all of that happen and you get there safely and back home? Shoot. I don't know. I don't count none of that. I don't give myself credit for none of that. Man, I'm such a good driver. Yeah, right. Well, somebody else may not be. Tire could blow out. Something can go wrong with the engine. Listen, folk. I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm getting older or something, my brother. That there are some things that I'm saying to myself, you know, I'm just counting every day, man. Every moment with God as being special. I don't know. But the Israelites had God with them. And when they couldn't be serviced, God was nothing more than a bellhop. You come when we ring the bell. La, 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 la. Like the man who built that beautiful house, his only concern was on top of the surface and not on the bottom. So Moses, they come to complain. <laughs> In verse 3, And the children of Israel said to them, All that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the what? The pots of meat. And when we what? Ate bread to the full. They're talking about in Egypt. You see, it was just their immediate need. It had been better for us to have stayed in Egypt so we could eat. Oh, you, you go, I'm going somewhere. You just hang with me for a minute. <laughs> if there's one thing I want to get in the heads of my children, they may not listen to Pop, listen to Mama. One thing I'm going to get in their heads, God provides in this house, child. If you don't hear nothing else I say, you better thank the Lord that your bread and water, your resting and your clothing and whatever else you got, the Lord provided. Amen. How many teaching your children the Lord provides? I know you got a good job. I understand that. I know. Hang in there. Just hang in there. See, because my concern is, what is your Christianity founded on? We've come a long way. Had it not been for the Lord on our side. Now, let me finish so we can go home. Go eat and go home. Can you imagine how God felt? I did something for these Negroes and look at this. Oh, oh, excuse me. I didn't mean to use that terminology. You don't have to look at Rose. Rose and I are cool. We, Rose is just, that's me. I don't know how you interpret. How you interpret Negro? That's my... That's my sweetheart right here, I'm telling you. Salt and pepper? Shoot. However, however, get this now. Get this. Get this. The Lord said, now what else, what other big thing do I need to do to impress you that I'm a God that can take care of you? What else? So verse 4 says this. Then... The Lord said what to Moses? Behold, who's going to do it? I will rain bread from heaven for you. Who's going to do it? It's in the desert, y'all. No, no, no. You got to come to the story with me. Uh-uh. You know why I read so much of the Bible? I want to believe in God. I want to... How many want to believe in God? <laughs> yeah. 
I want to believe in God. I'm telling the Lord, go ahead, do all you can. Make me a believer. That's, every time you go in the word of God, when you go in as a humble, a humble servant, you know what you're asking God? Make me a believer. Come on, impress me with this. And he says to you and I, I will rain down bread from heaven. You don't understand Hebrew thinking. You know what raining means? I'm going to supply it in abundance. I ain't talking about some biscuit or a, what they call a dumpling. I ain't talking about one little dumpling in soup. Oh, I love this. I couldn't wait to get to you in this one. I'm not talking about no dumpling or no biscuit. He said, I'm going to rain down bread from heaven. Now, the second thing you got to consider is it's in a place that's not popular for it to rain that. Wow. You missed what I said. See, God can supply our needs in impossible situations. That's all he's trying to say. That's all. Isn't he the God of heaven and earth? Does he control everything? So that simply means he's not handcuffed or tied. God can take care of us any place. I want to convince us folks. God can take care of us. I will rain down brain. Pull up that text. I will rain down bread, bread from heaven in the desert. I will. Now, I'm glad that God doesn't treat us like we deserve. Oh, uh, you missed what I said again. Because complaining people don't deserve nothing. You ever somebody complaining around you? You want to tell them, I wish they would shut up. Oh, excuse me, and you don't say that. You want to say that. <laughs> Always yapping about something wrong. Not an optimistic person, a pessimistic person. Always can find zero, ground zero. Water half full, they always see how empty it is. Huh? So here they are complaining. Let me see that verse again. And look what happens. He says, I'm going to rain down what? Bread from heaven for you. And the people shall do what? Go out and do what? And gather a certain rate, which is, which is two quarts. They will go out as two quarts every day. How much? For how long? How long is he going to feed them? How long? How long? Give us this bread hour. It is a commitment from daddy. Hold it. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Before you start just talking about the Israelites, the same God I know, the same God that served them, is the same God that's able to do it today too. I'm glad the Bible is more than some stuff we preach at church. We better believe this. Did you hear what the Bible says? God is going to shake the earth as well as the heavens. If our foundation is not firm, we will go with whatever is shaken. That's what the text is unfolding. And everything that is not shakable will stand. That's why our faith cannot be shaky. We either believe and trust God or we do not. He doesn't, he's not impressed with what comes from my lips. He only is impressed with what comes from my heart. Now, the text says he's going to do what? Pour bread down from heaven. I, we, we're going home. We're going home in a few minutes. He's going to pray at a certain rate every day that I may what? Whether they... Uh-oh. Testing coming. 
Temptation takes you away from God. Testing puts you in the favor of God. So that's why when we say we're tempted, that ain't got nothing to do with God. God is not trying to take something from us. He's trying to strengthen what we have. Don't you ever get that mixed up. Man, I was tempted. Let me give you an example of something. I got it quickly. A little child will, you bring a little Joe Quet over to somebody's house. Joe Quet is a little baby. Joe Quet has learned to play with dolls. There is nothing wrong with Joe Quet in playing with dolls, okay? But you take Joe Quet over to one of the sisters' house who has a very expensive doll that's for display, not for play. You follow, follow this. Joquette now does not know how to reason between playing with a real dial or that expensive dial. That's not in her noggin. All she knows is when you take her over there, she sees a dial she wants to play with. Or doll. It depends on what East Coast and whatever, doll or dial. My wife teases me about that all the time. Dial. Sound like Minnesota. Anyway, she wants to play with the thing. Now get this. Get this. Listen to me carefully. She is not wrong because she wants to play with it. She doesn't know that that's not something to play with. Somebody's got to teach her that she can't play with that doll. See, you thought she just naturally came out of the womb knowing that there are certain dolls she can play with or not. I beg to differ with you. Somebody has to tell her that that doll you cannot play with and discuss that with her so that she'll know that she that is off limits. She will not know it naturally. So now she sees the dial and with natural instincts she begins to move towards the dial. Mama says, Joquet, you can't play with that dial. Mama said no. Now, Jaquette does not understand why she can't play with that doll. She doesn't understand. The only thing she understands is that Mama has given a rule and she should obey it. Come on, talk to me. Yeah, you listen to this. See, if we don't train our children... See, they've got to know there's some constraints... The reason why we got all this killing out here? Because babies are raising babies who don't know how to teach babies. So Duquette moves towards, now I want you to hear this now. Here's temptation. She moves towards it, mama stops her. However, inside Duquette now is a thirst for now that which she cannot do. You ain't following what I just said. There is an increased request for this. She wants to touch it more so because mama said don't do it. She has a desire now. It becomes a mystique to find out why this is prohibited to me. Mm. So there are two desires working inside of her now. One, curiosity and the other one, this natural desire to play with what she wants. You see that? Two of them going off in her. Now, she waits till mama is out of eye shot. She stares at that thing, and that thing is calling her. Temptation. Trying to get out of what's put in there. You following me? See... Temptation tries to take something from you. Oh, you ain't listening to what I said. So what she does is when mama moves and leaves, if she hasn't learned to obey and reverence what mama is asking, she will wait till she's out of her earshot and attempt to go and get that doll anyway. And when she does... Temptation just worked. You put your hand on something God told you do not touch. And you know what happens after that? 
if that goes unpunished, it strengthens to be your will. And you will grow to always defy authority. You didn't follow what I said. I don't care how pretty our children are. Curly, wavy, bald head, whatever you want to call it. Dangling curls, ringlets, beautiful dresses. If you don't teach them, you're going to send them to hell. Now you miss what I said. That's why the Lord said, I've got to finish this in a few seconds here, to Israel. Okay? Now, I've done enough to prove to you that I'm God. I don't have to, but I'm going to do this. And you read the rest of the chapter when you go home. I just want to sum this up by showing you something. What God was after with Israel to teach them to trust God. They had hung out in Israel so long, I mean in Egypt so long, that they forgot about how to trust God. The reason why they said it was better for us to be there and get a meal because we know where it was coming from. Oh, really? Treat Being treated like a slave, you like that? And that's what you want. So the Lord says, oh, no. I got to get my people out of there so they learn how to worship the true God. I don't worship my job. Mm -mm. And my car, that gets me from A to B. But look here, I ain't in love with that bad boy. Because <clears throat> when it decides to stop running, I don't care how much you love it. <laughs> it's going to stop running. And you can talk sweet to it all you want. Come on, baby. Come on, come on. Keep going, keep going. Yeah, you try it. Go out there and try to talk to your metal and see. Go on, go ahead. I beg you, go ahead. When there's no gas in the tank, go right ahead. Talk to it all you want. Oh, please, please go. Please, come on, please. I got to make it home. Please. You can say all the sweet, the sweetest words you can ever come from your lips. That piece of metal ain't never, never going to go on your sweetness. <laughs> I don't, you haven't noticed that I have. All right, here we go, Israel. Now, here's what I'm going to do. There are how many days in a week? How many? Yeah. Always been seven. Ain't no eight. Seven. Lord makes it very plain. Seven days in a week. How many? Okay. He says this. Now, here's how we're going to work this. I'm going to allow you to go out, and I'm going to take care of you every day. But here's how it's going to happen. I'm going to test you to see when I provide for you, if you will abuse the privilege. So what he does is, he says, now I'm going to give two quarts per person, enough to make sure you take care of your family and no more. Do you know something? The other day I was over there in Buckhead area. I didn't, didn't, I went over there to help somebody. I mean, it was through Buckhead I was going, not in Buckhead. They don't need any help. Uh, gospel, yes. So I'm riding and I'm looking at these sprawling houses. You know what I had to ask myself? What do two people need with all of that? I, I just had to ask. What, what do I need with a seven room house and six bathrooms? I, I, well, Xbox 360, I see, okay. Yeah. But, but no, honestly folks, honestly. God said to Israel, he would not allow them to exploit each other. He wouldn't allow it. So he says that every family, no, depending on your family size, he didn't limit that. He said, but according to your family size, you go out and every single day I will provide enough for your family to eat. Not more or not less. And I love it because God portion control. He said those who had more. They got more for their family, and those who had less got enough for their less. Everybody got enough. That's all. That's all he promised. I'm talking about the God who can give you millions. 
but he only promised you a daily portion. You know why? Because he doesn't want to lose us. We get material drunk. Come on, you act like I'm talking to myself. I know I ain't talking to you beyond me. I know. We get drunk. We start buying stuff we don't need. Why? Because we got money to get it. We don't mind letting people know what we are about. You know, I used to crack on people who drove Mercedes Benz. That's stupid. I was young and dumb as a preacher. You don't need no Mercedes Benz. Well, that ain't my business. You get whatever God bless you to get. That's your business. That ain't mine. But the Lord told me, Drake Barber, you don't need a Benz. He told me that. Because I could have had one. But he told me, you don't need one. I don't need one. How dare I go and tell you don't need one? That's not my business. I'm going to do what God tells me. He says, first of all, you don't make enough money to take care of it. <laughs> the other day we were coming down the road from Virginia, and I'm looking at a bench torn up, rims all off. <laughs> I'm, maybe I'm vain. But I don't want a Benz just to drive one and look like that. I have no interest. So he told me, you can't afford to take care of one, so you can't have one. And I agreed. I got a Honda. <laughs> Barely afford to take care of it. Anyway. Listen, listen. Last, this last, I, really, go to the musicians, go up there. So you can shut me up. Listen. So they went out, and he told them, okay, six days you go out and do this. How many days? How many days in the week? Okay. So the first day is Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That's six days, isn't it? I don't care what you, how you cut it, that's six days. He said, every day I'm going to provide for you. Now, what I want to say is this. That if you, when you go out, <laughs> when you go out and get this food, now, it's going to be enough to take care of your family, but you can only get enough for one day at a time. Oh, we would be in trouble. You know why he said that? Because the Lord is trying to tell you and I that he will provide for us every single day. He wouldn't allow you to go overboard except when we get to the Sabbath. Now, here we go. Falling in love with Jesus is the best thing I've ever done. Every day. So they went out, and then there was stipulation. If you go out the next day, I mean, if you try to go and be selfish and get more than you should, then what's going to happen is... That portion that you get, you will not be able to eat it. It's going to stink and have maggots in it. Testing me. Now you can imagine me as the breadwinner of my house, or if I'm the man in my house, and I disobeyed God. Do you know what I subjected my family to? That's why, brothers, we got to lead our homes and trust in God. Brothers, we do. Every day they went out. Get this food that he, you read it. It was some kind of food that they had never heard of before. <laughs> Listen. The Bible said that they had never heard of this food before. It was like a whitish yellow, and it, it, it was, it was, it was, it was, it, it, it multifaceted. It could be cooked. It could be eaten in cereal. It could be baked. 
Are you listening? They had never seen this before. Don't you tell me God can't provide for us. He can create stuff just to take care of us if he wants. And so the, the, the Bible calls it manna. It, and guess what? It had a taste to it. It was like bread that tastes like honey. It came naturally sweet. God mercy. There ain't no sugar out there or no, you know, agave. And no maple syrup. It had nothing to sweeten it with. It came already. Ba and I can just imagine. Can I go off just a second, please? I wonder what the angels were doing when they were cooking this stuff up. Come on, talk to me. They got excited. They were just dumping the stuff out of heaven all over the place. I, I can imagine how heaven must have smelt when they were making this stuff up there. And they got excited because they only made enough portion for each and every day. And they just dumped it out. And it was falling all over from heaven. And then the test came. Not temptation, the test. The Lord said, now, on Friday is going to be a special day. We call it preparation day. The Sabbath is the seventh day of the week, has always been. The what day of the week? And he said, that's the day I want to be worshipped on, so you should have all your work finished before we come together and worship. Because I desire, I desire, I desire your full attention. Don't bring nothing else to the Sabbath but you. Testing. On Friday, I'm going to allow you to get a double portion. <laughs> How can God do that? How can he make one day enough and the next day plentiful? Lisa? How many following what the Lord says? Now go and get a double portion. Tomorrow's the Sabbath. And if you go out there tomorrow, you're going to find that there's nothing for you to get. You know what that says? That if you didn't get yours on Friday, you starved on Sabbath. Because nobody had enough to give to you to take care of your family on Sabbath. Because people only had enough for their own family. And now, the Sabbath came, and Moses was hurt, because God already instruct, instructed them what to do. He had already six days proven how he could take care of them. And that Sabbath, do you know there were some people that went out looking for bread? Anyhow. Your Christianity is based on what? It's got to be more than just coming to a church service and being entertained. I'm sorry. But before Jesus comes, he's going to shake all of us up. And only those who really trust God are going to be able to hang in this thing, people. Because he's going to remove everything that has become a crutch to us to make it. And so the question I must ask. Are you serious? I think Brother Bryce said something that was interesting. Are we really preparing to go to heaven when Jesus comes, y'all? Are you really preparing to go to heaven when Jesus comes? Because if I don't trust him now, I never will. While God tests me, I want to be faithful to him, don't you? I want to be faithful to God. And if I could holler it from the top of my lungs, Jesus is coming. He's coming, you all. He's coming. Hear me. He's coming. And no matter what our emotions tell us, 
may we have the mind of Jesus to know he is coming. He's coming. Father, thank you for visiting with us. Thank you. I realize as I read this passage of Scripture, I apologize for all of us. We've all failed. Oh, Lord, there are times we have not explicitly trusted you. I don't know why. We, we, we just feel we're grown up. We don't need to ask you for this and for that. But, Lord, we want to. We want to be the kind of people that live in the faith world. And we can say to others, God takes care of us and believe it. So we invite you in our lives. Please come in, O oh Lord. Take charge of us. Help us to be the kind of people you know we ought to be. Falling in love with you. Help us to do that each and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. As we close, there's a bulletin that you all have if you don't. If there's anyone in this place, just keep, we're going to sing this as we close. If there's anyone you're looking for a church that you want to embrace and be encouraged to follow your God, I'd like for you just to indicate that on that bulletin. And this week, we will for sure be in contact with you to assist you in your walk with God every day as much as we possibly can. Sing this with me, Falling in Love. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus falling in love with Jesus is the best thing I've ever ever done once again come on sing it with me mm -hmm. falling in love with Jesus Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus is the best thing I've ever, ever done. In his arms, in his arms, come on now. Mm -hmm. In his arms, I feel protected in his arms I feel protected I feel protected oh in his arms I feel connected there's no place I'd rather rather be oh falling with Jesus falling in love with Jesus falling in love with Jesus is the best thing I've ever ever Flag bearers, host.
Black burgers. Retrieve colors. Adventurers, attention! Pathfinders, adventurers, center face! Flag bearers, mock time, on, left, left, flag bearers, right, face. Bearers, forward, on, left, left, mock time, march. Adventurous forward, The ushers will usher the remainder of the uh, congregation out of the church. We give our pathfinders and adventurers an amen. Um, one quick announcement from the Women's Ministries Department. Um, please, uh, all the sisters of the church, please check the uh, table. There's a table in the foyer. Um, and there's still some names that are out there that need to be picked up. So please check the table in the front foyer for some names that still need to be picked up in the envelopes there. Thank you. <laughs>